What's up? I, uh, game just wrapped up over here on my right. Stanford just need the clock out. Game is over. And so is this team's season, at least in terms of, you know, the most optimistic and bold of preseason goals. So, 30 to 22, Stanford wins. Where do we start with this one, guys? Um, you know, first of all, I didn't make a pregame video for this game. I didn't really know what to expect. I, I knew this was the biggest hurdle remaining on our um, schedule for the rest of the season. And I was starting to see things kind of fit together. I was like, okay, we get through Stanford. Then we've got Utah and Wazoo, two games that I fully expect us to handle our business in. Uh, I expect wins in both of those games. You're 11 and one. You finish the Pac-12. You go 12 and one by winning the uh, you know Pac-12 championship. We're gonna be there, and we might get in, we might not. But I, I started to see like a few things go our way, and team just isn't good enough, guys. Um, we learned that pretty emphatically tonight, I think. And I guess it's okay. I, I, I knew the team was probably not gonna be as good as they were last year, but. Um, to have it in front of you like this and to, you know, blow an opportunity to be in the college football playoff because, let's not get it twisted, as flawed as this team is, they are a handful of plays away from being undefeated. And um, they can blame themselves for not not putting themselves in a good spot in many ways. So... Where do we start? Um, both sides of the ball deserve a lot of blame in this one. Starting with the offense, which the offense has been the unit that we've been putting the blame on for most of this season. The defense has been playing great pretty much all year. Offense has been a bit of a whipping boy. I'll give credit where credit is due. Miles Gaskin, great game. Great player, played a great game. He is on the verge of setting some school records and he deserves to set them. I hope he comes back next year and shatters some of those records. He's one of the greatest running backs in school history. Nothing else you can say about that guy. I can't take away anything from him. Offensive line played all right without their star left tackle. I'm not going to hate on those guys. The rest of it's just not good enough. Jake Browning, I know he's a good quarterback. Maybe he's not perfect. I know that he's not as big as you would like your quarterback to be. He doesn't have the arm strength. He doesn't have the zip on the ball that, you know, Russell Wilson has. But he's better than this. He's better than being a game manager. He's better than dinking and dunking and checking down every other play. <clears throat> so if I'm going to put the blame on anybody for anything... I don't think receivers are getting open very much. I don't think our receivers are winning their battles. And I know we got unlucky. Hunter Bryant, right as he was starting to break out, broke his leg or whatever it is that happened to him. Um, that sucks. That was a big part of our plan this year. And just as he was starting to figure things out, it seemed like he broke his leg or he's out. He's not playing right now is the important part. And... After Dante Pettis, who we know, we know what Dante Pettis is. You've got guys who show up sometimes, but sometimes they don't. Aaron Fuller, he's made some nice plays. I don't know how often he's winning his battles. I get the sense it's not often enough. Uh, Will Disley, uh, Drew Sample, these guys, they, don't, they, they just don't feel like they're good enough to be part of a big-time college football passing attack and it was painful to watch tonight as you know early in that game everything was going great the running game was dominant the passing game was complementing the, pa the the running game really well Jake Brown had a great start to this game we had two big drives to start the game two 90 yard almost touchdown drives and then we were driving down for another score Coke hold on zero is now god fuck you ESPN Fuck you. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm just in no mood to watch Coke advertisements right now. Um, 
they they stopped us on fourth down, fourth and one. I, I have no problem going for it. I don't trust our kickers for shit right now. Didn't get it. And after that point, the offense couldn't do anything right. They picked up a couple first downs over the next two quarters of football. Uh, they had penalties that set them back. They weren't able to get anything going through the air. Uh, drives were stalling. Just nothing was working for the offense for about two quarters in between the uh, start of the second quarter and the start of the fourth. And I believe it's a receiver problem. We didn't replace John Ross. I know John losing John Ross was rough. I get that. I understand. But the guys we have right now, I don't think they're winning their battles. I know, I know our quarterback made a couple of questionable decisions out there. He was inaccurate from time to time. But that's the number one thing I'm looking at. And that's the number one thing that really needs to be improved this offseason. John Brown's not going to come back. Or not John Brown. John Ross. John Ross is not going to come back. We need some good recruits. Defense. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a Washington defense let me down like this. Um, early in the game, it was fine. We let up a long Stanford touchdown drive in the uh, second quarter, but we forced some punts. We were getting decent pressure on Costello. We were pretty much taking away Bryce Love, who was playing in this game injured. Things looked fine, and there was a point where this game was 14-7. to Washington was driving, and I felt good. I was like, we got this. Let's just score here, and I felt really good about our chances. And I, the fourth down stop changed the momentum of this game drastically, but I, I cannot believe the way this defense lost at the line of scrimmage over and over and over again. As this game went on, Bryce Love was dominant. He was just running all over this defense in a way I can't remember any running back running against this defense. It, it's been a few couple of years, I would say, at least. Um, couldn't get off the field on third down. Uh, KJ Costello, his numbers were not big, but when he needed them, he was hitting uh, white side. Whiteside had a big game. He picked up some big third downs to Trenton Irwin. It was not an explosive passing attack, but they hit a few plays against us on third downs, moving the sticks, and, you know, Washington lost our number one cornerback a few weeks ago, and tonight was a night where you kind of noticed because receivers seemed to be winning their battles in key moments. And, um, yeah. So a failure on the part of the Washington defense. It's been a while since we've been able to say that. <sighs> Other than that, I don't know, guys. I mean, I'm bummed. This was a winnable game, and the offense only showed up for half the game, and the defense showed up for the first few, uh, quarter, and that's about it. So, of course, I'm bummed, but... I don't know. I feel like I learned tonight that the team's not good enough anyway. The team might be good enough to win the conference, but that's not going to be enough now to get into the playoff and that's what they deserve. They're not they're not a NF they're not an NCAA playoff team. They're not a top 4 team. They're a top they're a top 12 team. They deserve a good bowl game. They deserve a conference win and they need to get better next year. I don't know who's going to be back next year. I don't know who's leaving. I think Browning's back. I think Trey Adams is back. Uh, I don't know about Gaskin. I don't know about Pettis. Um, but our receivers, I, I need to see somebody who can really change the game at that position next year, besides Dante Pettis. I need to see improvement. Um, oh, before I end this video, first of all, fuck you, Friday Night College Football. This was the stupidest... Um, broadcast I've seen in a while. Pe most people couldn't even watch the first quarter of this game because Fox Sports 1 was showing truck racing and you had to turn the game, turn it to Fox Sports 2 to watch the first quarter. 
and I don't think I get Fox Sports 2. I was at a casino for the first half of this game, so I don't think I would have been able to watch the first quarter of the game if I was at home. This is the only college football game on right now, I think, or it's the only significant one. They can't even get it on TV. This is a joke. So, oh, God damn it, why is Skip Bayless on my TV? So, yeah, screw you, Fox Sports 1. Nobody wants to watch goddamn trucks racing around. Oh, and Pac-12 refs, uh, fuck you guys too. Um, yeah, that last drive. Look, even if Washington had won this game, I still would have said this is not really a playoff team, so I'm not, I'm not even tripping about that. But that last drive, when Washington was driving for a chance to tie, we had a big first down run, bring it back, holding. All the dude did was overpower the guy he was blocking. It was the biggest crap call I've seen in a while. I cannot believe the referees actually decided to change the to drastically change the complexion of that last drive with a call like that. So, yeah, you guys freaking suck at your job. I don't like it when people lose their job, but you Pac-12 referees and, and people who watch Pac-12 games know you guys deserve to lose your job because you, you suck at it. So, yeah. Um, that's about it, guys. I'm down. I'm not out. We can still win the conference, and I'll be proud of the guys if they do it, but they're not good enough. Bring back who you can next year. Say goodbye to a few players, and... We need a good recruiting class. We need targets for Jake Browning. All right, props to Stanford. Um, they they're, they're, they just played better. This isn't like the Arizona State loss. The Arizona State loss, I thought, was somewhat fluky and not indicative of what this team is. This loss, it, it was different, guys. <sighs> Peace out.